Hello there guys and welcome back to the channel. So today we are recording the last quest in 6.4. We have gone through uh, all the paths in 6.4, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Now we have 646 left. And uh, so we can start with the path that I personally consider to be pretty much the easiest one, which is uh, this uh, buff duration tenacity fury path. So effectively your opponents have tenacity, they all have agent venom like shrug debuffs of abilities and other than that this is just a flat out plain simple lane not much to worry about there is a vision arcus and Annihilus on there so be prepared bring in your doctor doom if you have a doctor doom or any other a relatively decent mystic character you should be able to breeze through uh, most of this path this is also a perfect path for which you can just ramp up a gun pretty much throughout the entire lane and make sure he arrives jacked at the grandmaster uh, for the best Grandmaster counters, I'm going to discuss it a bit later, but now we're going to jump on path number two first. Uh, yeah, because I don't think there's too much to discuss on the first path. Uh, you can take a look at that Angela, but that Angela doesn't really have anything too special as well. She has Aggression, Fury and Rigor, but so long as you're dealing enough damage, you don't need to worry about an Angela isn't really the scariest opponent with Aggression, Fury. So yeah. Uh, again, uh, like all other maps in 6.4, they have six different paths with a mini boss uh, attached to the end of each path. And this is going to be arguably one of the most difficult paths, which is a life cycle and rage and soft guard, which means you can take a lot of damage and block. So you can't be blocking a lot. Obviously, life cycle is annoying to play around if you can't block and reliably knock down opponents, which also rage kind of caps. So you really do need to find some of your better uh, life cycle counters. The void would be pretty much perfect for countering a lot of this stuff. I feel that uh, perhaps Ghost is not always going to be the best option here. And you do want to use champions like Wasp uh, perhaps as well, because Wasp can just keep on knocking opponents down and she Wasp has powers thing as well. So that is going to be extremely helpful. And all in all, life cycle is one of those nodes where you need to kind of like learn how to play around the opponent's abilities. At the same time, because there's a rage node active, uh, you might want to try and capitalize on using stacked mystic champions with access of those extra furies. Champions like Longshot are probably going to be doing relatively well. Uh, definitely worth a shot, perhaps Morningstar and a bunch of others. If you can reach that uh, rage node cap, which I believe if you're running like boost and running maxed out champions, you should be able to do. And then the final champion is this uh, Killmonger, his sharpened claws and Wakanda leadership. And he is a really, really tricky opponent. Honestly, like one of the most successful ways how to deal with him was simply using Aegon, because uh, he's really tanky. <laughs> you can hardly crit at him, can block, and this is a really tricky fight. So you do need to be uh, careful when approaching this fight. Bring in your champions with armor break. Ideally, champions can armor break with their specials or regular hits so you don't have to rely on parry and be careful of that life cycle obviously and killmonger's power gain so this is in fact a really tricky uh, sort of node uh, moving on to the next path next path we have one second come on tap on power and masochism and overreach fury so this again is relatively simple path you just need to play it on masochism and the increased power gain. Other than that, uh, there's nothing too tricky. Increased power gain is only 100% increase, so you do not need to necessarily use power control champions. And masochism obviously ideally means you will not be playing with champions that rely on damage, uh, damaging debuffs or just any kind of like debuffs over time. Uh, when it comes to champ, uh, the opponents here we can see that there isn't too many tricky opponents perhaps uh, Punisher 2099 and Green Goblin and Dormammu and Warlock towards the end and Warlock is the mini boss with spreading infection which means there's going to be more infection going about all around and aggression armor but it's not really the trickiest and hardest kind of like thing to play around uh, definitely they have been relatively gentle with us with those nodes I would even say that this Dormammu is likely to be quite a bit harder uh, so masochism 100% power gain lane I think is relatively simple compared to some of the other ones definitely compared to the life cycle one that one's so much harder and now we have aggression fury and bane 
and this um, aggression of Yuri Bane and Dismay. And this lane is actually uh, easily cheesable with Electro with the exception of a couple of fights. You do need to be careful of that Red Skull because obviously you can't strike Red Skull's block. Uh, Wasp also you should be careful, yes, because once she evades you're going to technically receive a hit and that's going to start Bane Timer. So Wasp isn't really ideal to be cheesed with Electro as well. But uh, other than that, you're pretty much uh, able to one-shot all of these guys by simply letting them build up the Furies, bringing in Heimdall and Electro and letting them strike your Electro once they are at like 12 to 15 Furies. And they're just going to immediately die from the damage back. Uh, just as a reminder... <coughs> My bad, just a reminder, uh, in addition to Electro, you can also use Duped Quake or Duped Killmonger. Those are the three known champions that this cheese method works. Uh, the number of Furies that's needed differs for each and is just a subject of testing for yourselves. But it's extremely easy way right, how to deal with some of these opponents. And then moving on to the next lane. The next lane is Polkadot Power. Polkadot Power basically means you gain your power kind of like Doctor Strange so you do not receive any power from landing or receiving hits but you do gain power consistently throughout the time and rage and back blast so the main most important issue on here would be the back blast so you do want to make sure you are able to deal with the incinerate debuffs uh, so you also either want an incinerate immune champion or you want champion that can shrug these debuffs off uh, but you can also enjoy the increased uh, damage uh, from back blast on your crits uh, so Aegon again is a quite ideal candidate for this lane because you can just consistently keep on ramping him up and other than that uh, because it's back blast obviously there could be human torch there could be a whole other variation main thing is the incinerate immunity that you need to contend with and then you also have the rage and opponents going unblockable if you deliver too much damage but since of this because of the stacked health pulls it's uh, relatively easy <laughs> to avoid kind of like getting caught up by rage too much because it is quite substantial margin of damage you must be able to deliver in order to trigger those rage furies uh, all in all definitely did not remember that path as being one of the problem paths and uh, then next one is Mesmerize, uh, redounded de Redoubled Determination and Pilfer Regeneration. Now this Mesmerize path, again, it depends on your approach. Realistically, it's relatively simple, so long as you are able to bring in a counter for Mesmerize. So True Strike, True Accuracy, stuff like M Frost, Nick Fury, so on and so forth, all of them work perfectly. You can also try and just parry and do two, three hit combos. That strategy works perfectly fine as well. And uh, all in all, it's not too tricky. You do have like Ebony Maw and Morningstar that you need to be aware of and you need to have counters for. But this entire lane is pretty much filled with mystic characters as well. You can see Ebony Morningstar. So Human Torch can absolutely shred through them, for instance. Uh, just parry heavy, parry heavy. You can get those smolders up incredibly quickly and they're going to go down fast. Uh, obviously, them all being mystic heroes, you can use even Blade with <laughs> Mephisto Synergy. Or, once again, any champion that has access to True Strike, True Accuracy, so on and so forth. And I'm not even going to discuss which lane kind of disables what benefits to Grandmaster. Because for the most part, none of them really mattered. None of them changed the fight one bit. You gained small, basically, damage bonuses here and there, and then you lost some abilities here and there. So none of them were significant enough to say, like, yes, this Grandmaster fight is much easier thanks to the fact that I helped disable this node or enable that node or whatever. So I'm not going to discuss any of these abilities, just the fact that you need to know that the Grandmaster fight changes by slight amount depending which path you take, because one of these abilities gets disabled or enabled basically all the time. So if this is inflation, then you need to take a look at Grandmaster and check out what inflation does. Attack rating granted from each token of competence is increased by 50%. However, the Grandmaster's attack rating is also increased by 30% for each token. So you see, you're going to be able to deal more damage, but you're going to take more damage in blocks. So technically, this might help you finish out the fight faster. 
but if you're struggling and if you're taking hits and block or if you mess up you can die faster and that goes pretty much for like every single one of these tokens they give you a bonus but they also give you a downside and in the end it kind of evens out when it comes to grandmaster i am yet to make a full-on how to defeat grandmaster guide will certainly do that within upcoming days now uh, but uh, i did want to show some of the best kind of like champions some of the best options that we can use against grandmaster even though it is extremely important to note that you can pretty much use any champion against grandmaster it's much more about understanding the fight doing what's asked of you following the instructions and confining within the rules now there are benefits to couple of attributes obviously if you can take a lot of damage in a block or able to heal that is super beneficial therefore for instance morningstar is a really really good option if not the best option for fighting grandmaster just because she has that super high perfect block chance and she consistently is able to heal and also another important attribute is access easy access to damage or time debuffs which Morningstar doesn't have, but Grandmaster considers her energy damage from like level 1 and level 2 as a damage over time effect as well, therefore she can access that bit. And other than that, uh, your missions will include like uh, critting, striking the block, uh, parrying, uh, knocking the Grandmaster down and so on and so forth. So pretty much any champions do work, the only kind of like specific... Uh, attribute that some champions might fail but even with failing a single mission you can still carry on fighting single challenge i believe it's called and it's the access to damage or time effects so if your champion does have access to damage or time effects they're automatically slightly better counter comp opposing the ones that they do not have access to that so for instance dr doom again is extremely tanky easy to and knock down the opponent, easy access to damage over time effect. Dr. Doom's probably also one of the best options. Other popular options that people have been using is Captain America Infinity War, uh, Hyperion, Aegon, Stealth with Spider-Man, so on and so forth. We have seen many different fights against this guy. But important to note that you could pretty much use anyone. Uh, it's much more about just kind of like not messing up and just understanding the fight than having a perfect counter. So, uh, wanted to let everybody know that before i finish the video and uh, yes i will be making another special how to defeat grandmaster video at least one of them uh, but yeah i hope you guys enjoyed the video let me know if you have any questions if you do not then just hit that like button because it doesn't cost you anything and it helps me out and hit that sub button if you haven't yet tell your friends to subscribe and all that good stuff and i'll catch you guys soon see ya